Hello everyone, my name is Bria Milburn. I work for the Youth Services Department for Greene County Libraries, and I wanna talk about American whimsy. Now, when you think of adventure, do you think of the United States? Maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Maybe you feel like in order to experience culture, you've gotta take a plane overseas. And you're not necessarily wrong. There's so much to see and do in other countries that are not our own that I can't wait to explore someday. But I also recognize that we've got a lot of whimsy and uniqueness and culture right in our home country. So today I'm gonna to talk about six different locations that are extremely whimsical that I have checked out over some of my travels that, who knows, maybe you'll wanna check out someday too. Now be warned, these are centric, they're odd, they're bizarre, they're whimsical. How many synonyms can I come up with for that word? Who knows, maybe I'll use more in today's presentation. But just bear with me, I do jump around a lot, but I'll take you to quite a few locations and maybe one will be the one that you travel to next. So let's begin. So our first destination isn't too far away from home. Depending on where you are in Springfield or the surrounding areas, you might be about two, two and a half hours away from Bentonville, Arkansas. Now, Bentonville, Arkansas has such a unique tone when compared to the rest of the cities in Arkansas. And one of those reasons is because of their Crystal Bridges Museum. So according to the Crystal Bridges website, the mission of this museum is to welcome all to celebrate the American spirit in a setting that unites the power of art with the beauty of nature. And boy, they do a good job of this. This isn't one of those museums that you enter into and you feel like you've seen all in one day. This is a museum that is constantly rotating out its artists, its art, and its different exhibits and festivals. Okay guys, I told you that I was going to talk about Crystal Bridges events, but as an added bonus, I'm also gonna talk about four other whimsical things that I've done while I've been in the Bentonville area that I feel like are kind of a good itinerary if you ever wanted to take a day trip out there. So first and foremost though, those Crystal Bridges special events. Now Crystal Bridges has a constant stream of different events for each season. They keep tourists coming in and they keep locals satisfied and, you know, craving their next big artsy event. But I'm going to talk about the two that I've personally visited that I've loved dearly. So that first one is the Chalk Festival that I went to around my birthday in 2019 or 2018. I'm losing track of time. But um, the pictures from the slide before show that event a little bit more. You can, you know, pause, click back if you want to look over them a little bit better or, you know, not. We can just keep going. It's totally up to you. But this chalk festival is a lot of fun. Basically, what you get to do is you get to see uh, artists, you know, up and close as they work on their chalk creations. And my favorite, I posted on my previous slide, it's that bottom left picture of a realistic version of Doctor Strange. Yeah, that was made with chalk pastels on a sidewalk. It is amazing what artists can do in certain mediums. Like, it just blows my mind. So not only can you watch chalk artists uh, create on their sidewalks, but you can also um, do a little chalk art of your own on the designated sidewalk area that Crystal Bridges has roped off for guests to be a part of the creative process. And there's food booths and there's live entertainment and just a fun summertime all around. The most recent event I went to though is the North Forest Lights at Crystal Bridges. And oh my goodness, people, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right now. That picture in the middle here on this slide does not do this event justice. It was just the clearest picture I could get. This light is constantly moving. Uh, things are happening all around you and by golly, you don't really wanna have your phone out 
in it. You just you just want to live in the moment. You want to take in the sounds and the sights of these lights and music. So I've actually pulled up um, the different things that you can see during the North Forest Lights tour. It's on the Crystal Bridges website, but there are five distinct installations. There's a crystal grove where you're walking through this pathway of fairy light. I, I did feel like a fairy princess while I was walking <laughs> walking through this certain area. It's just little twinkling lights and it, it's so pretty and the music is so fun and whimsical and fantasy-like. And then there's the forest frequencies. That's kind of what you're seeing in this picture here. It's going to be these lightsaber-like um, works of art that are just shooting up into the trees um, that are going along with the music playing in the background. Then there's the hearth. It's this giant bonfire-like structure as explained on the website, but I thought of it as more of a, a UFO or a spaceship. I don't know. It, you know, tomato, tomato, I guess. But it's just this big glowing ball of warm light. And there's a little show around it, so it was really neat. Then there's the whispering tree. This was probably my favorite. It's between this and the next installation I'm about to talk about. But the Whispering Tree, you get to talk to this giant Grandmother Willow-like tree and not just talk, you get to sing to it. You actually get to sing to this tree and by singing to it, she determines the color of your voice. Isn't that odd? <laughs> so odd, but I love it. And I am proud to announce that my voice is magenta which doesn't shock me in the slightest. I feel like, yeah, of course, if my voice is magenta, why wouldn't it be? And then the last installation is the memory of water, which it, the website explains it best. It honestly takes my breath away when I try to talk about it, but the website explains it as surrounding yourself in light and sound as a simulated stream brings water back to this dry creek bed. Uh, the forest is a natural setting with changing elevations. It, it's it's so beautiful. Like the way that they can project light and make it look like a dried up stream has water flowing through it again. And not just water. I felt like at times the light would change into this white cloudy look and it was almost like we were entering the sky. It's such an out of uh, out of this world experience and uh, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. But I've talked about <laughs> the events long enough. It's time for me to talk about the four other things on my personal itinerary for when I go to Bentonville. The next thing I've got to do while I'm there is visit the Momentary. Now, the Momentary is actually, um, it's a satellite to Crystal Bridges Museum. So this is a more contemporary art space. Um, and I'm looking at their history on the momentary.org um, page. And basically, they started up, fun fact, as originally as a cheese factory. And they repurposed it to be this contemporary art space um, so to keep the building in existence. So now we've got this wonderful place. It's not as big as Crystal Bridges, of course. It's an extension of it. Um, but it's got rotating exhibits constantly. So every time you're there, you're going to see something brand new. When we were there, we got to see, you can see on the left side, my sister-in-law is standing in front of a room that has thousands upon thousands of these wind chimes, sun catchers, outside ornaments, basically. Um, which was really pretty and very bizarre all the same. And I, on the right-hand side, you'll see, I'm standing in front of streamers that are being blown by giant fans. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, art, people. <laughs> that, that is art, but it actually is really pretty, and it was very satisfying to take a picture in front of. The third installation here, or the third item on my list is checking out that Walmart museum or otherwise known as Sam Walton's first Walmart store, his five and dine, dime. Um, yeah, fun fact. Another fun fact. I'm just going to present you with a lot of those today. But 
the very first Walmart happened in Bentonville, Arkansas. So the super centers we know and love originated here and you can take a journey through Walmart's heritage through the Walton 5 and 10 on their square. But another cool aspect of this is if you can't get out to the Walmart Museum, Okay, I started a little closer to home, but I'm gonna go ahead and travel out west for destination two, which is Los Angeles, California. So I traveled out to Los Angeles back in 2019 with my family, and one thing I told them was on my bucket list that I had to go see was the last bookstore. So I'm just gonna read you a little snippet that I pulled from their website. The Last Bookstore is California's largest used and new book and record store. Currently in our third incarnation, we began in 2005 in a downtown Los Angeles loft. Can you imagine? Look how big this <laughs> bookstore has become. Just from that picture alone that you see right below that quote, that's just their entrance. There is so much more to look at on the first floor that there's just little coves that lead to other sections of books, um, even like a rare book room, which I was baffled by. I like that is so awesome. But I'm taking this picture from the second floor of this store. It is giant. And then it's not only a bookstore. It's also da 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 artsy. <laughs> you'll you'll figure out quite soon that I love me a good art installation, people. <laughs> I, I just, I think that's one of the most whimsical things that we can experience is just um, the celebration of art and culture in our home and what they represent to us. And I love seeing what people can come up with. Um, in different mediums. And in this case, we've got the medium being books. We are using old books to create this wonderful wacky display you see before you. There's a lot of different picturesque um, scenes like this all throughout the bookstore. And I'll show you a few more in the next slide. Yep, just like I said, more pictures of me posing by more artsy book displays. On the left side, you'll see me walking through a book arch, which I am not sure how this was made. If I attempted anything like this, it would have <laughs> collapsed on top of me. But wow, it, it was sure fun to walk through. And then there was a lot of these window um, book formations around the second floor that made for great profile pictures, I must say. So of course, me and my family, we all had to take pictures and the little circular formation that the books had made because, I mean, who wouldn't? And then on that far right side, I'm in the science fiction section and my family probably could have just left me there and I would have been fine the whole trip. <laughs> They could just drive back around and pick me up when they were done exploring other places in uh, the area because I I love this. I, I just love this bookstore. And I love that, once again, I told you it's not just a bookstore. It, it's very artsy, but it also is, it, it's a yarn shop. It's a, an art collective. It's a labyrinth. Uh, on that second floor, there's actually this maze that leads you to looking at other art and actually getting kind of lost upstairs. Like, I thought I'd get lost in a bookstore and, you know, I tease about that all the time, but I, <laughs> I honestly thought I was going to be lost in the bookstore. And then, you know, people be like, uh-huh, sure. But I, I promise it was such a labyrinth of different art and books and culture that I got swept away. I got lost in it and I loved every minute of it. There are so many other bookstores in the LA area. This is almost just a guide for me for the next time I go down because there are so many that I need to check off my list. I'm just impressed at how many bookstores and locally owned bookstores at that are in the LA area. So, you know, 
maybe you want to look these up sometimes and just, you know, check out their websites. Uh, I'm all for just supporting local bookstores, and I love learning about new bookstores. So maybe that's the librarian in me, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe. I'm pulling you from the west, and I'm taking you all the way down south. We are now in Orlando, Florida. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, I'm familiar with vacations in Florida. I'm familiar with Disney World. I'm familiar with Universal. And hey, you might even be familiar with what I'm about to talk about now. But I know that I've you know, told about my adventures at this certain place um, to friends and family who have not been there, who didn't even know it existed. So I'd say that's, it's pretty unique. It's pretty different and it's pretty, I think it's very whimsical. So let me just read a little bit from the Discovery Cove website. Um, Welcome to Discovery Cove, a unique all-inclusive day resort where you and your family will experience exciting animal encounters and a breathtaking tropical atmosphere. Yeah, quite the sales pitch, right? <laughs> well, I'm not here to sell anything because that's not my job. My job is just to tell you how beautiful it is here. So my husband and I went to... Discovery Cove on our honeymoon. We wanted to be in the Orlando area because we love it there. We love the heat. We love the parks. But we also wanted to do something that was peaceful, kind of just, you know, so we could relax a little bit after the wedding. And this was a great option for us. And I'll go ahead and tell you more about it in the next slide. What do we love about Discovery Cove? There's plenty that we love about Discovery Cove. I'll just talk about the main five though. First off, my husband and I love the meals, the snacks, and the drinks that were all included with the admission. I must admit there was like a sticker shock when we first paid for this, but they have a wonderful breakfast buffet. They had a great lunch spread, burgers, chicken. I think I had a salmon and he had some sort of steak. It was really good. But the most fun is going up to the snack locations. There's so many snack stands across the park or oasis. I think I call it more of an oasis. It's not really a park. But it, nonetheless, you go up to the snack locations and you'd ask for Otis Spunkmire cookies or goldfish or pretzels or a beverage or, you know, you name it. They had it and they were there to replenish when we burned off all our lunch and breakfast calories from swimming. So much appreciated there. We also loved the rivers that were provided. So there is a smaller river that goes around uh, this marmoset area that I'll talk about a little bit later. But there is also a giant river that I want to classify as a lazy river, but it was so much more than that because you're not just getting an inner tube and floating down it, you're actively snorkeling in this river. So you're gonna go into these little caves that are set up, you're going to go through waterfalls, there's like different statues and structures that are sunken that you can snorkel and look at um, under the water. It, it's just, and it's gorgeous, it's like every, little turn on this river there's something beautiful to look at so and it's clean and it's nice and oh my goodness i could go there right now i love it our third thing we loved was the reservation system so the reservation system i'm sure is even stricter now but even when we went they only let a limited amount of people into this oasis like area each day and so it feels like you're kind of there, you know, on a private vacation. And if you don't believe me that anything in Orlando can be super exclusive, just check out uh, that picture um, in the bottom left-hand corner. That's right. That's me chilling with all my friends. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, there are people there, of course. Like, we weren't there by ourselves, but the experience is just so private and there's such a limited capacity at this place that wherever you're going, you feel like you've got room. 
And so my husband and I really like that, especially for a honeymoon when we could just, you know, spend time with each other floating down the river and snorkeling and enjoying our snacks and just sunbathing. That, that was nice. Just sunbathing. So this is where the whimsy happens. I'm sure you're like, yes, this is all fine and dandy. We love swimming. We love beaches. But where is that extra oomph that really makes this place stand out in this list? Well, that's the saltwater pool. So before, I had only experienced like getting up close and personal with tropical fish and manta rays when it came to like touch tanks at different aquariums, which I love, by the way, I love aquariums, but I had never before gotten the chance to swim with them. And in the saltwater pool at Discovery Cove, we could. So it was freezing. <laughs> My husband had to convince me to get in. He's like, it's worth it. Just come on. And I wasn't sure because that saltwater pool is so cold, even though we were in Florida heat. But once I finally, you know, bit the bullet and I went into the water, might I just say, I felt like I was in Finding Nemo. Like the there's just such beautiful reef down there. They have all sorts of colorful, eclectic, tropical fish. But my favorite was the sea pancakes that I got to swim with. Oh, I love manta rays. They were so friendly. And I, you know, how close to feeling like a mermaid can you really get besides actually swimming up close and personal with some of your favorite aquatic animals? It's fantastic. And then last but not least, interacting with adorable land animals. So if you've ever, you know, been to the Butterfly Palace in Branson, you know kind of what the gist is there. They hand you uh, a little flower of nectar and then when you walk into the room, um, the butterfly room, butterflies will land on you and they will drink out of the nectar in your flower. And it's really cool. And it's a really special experience. And that's kind of the same interaction that you're getting at Discovery Cove, only this time it's with tropical birds that I didn't even know existed until they were landing on my arm. Um, my husband and I were handed these bowls of like dried fruits and different grains that the birds really enjoy and we were taken to this room that was filled with different tropical birds and lo and behold it didn't take very long for one of them or actually a couple of them to fly down and actually start eating out of our hands i was a disney princess that's right i was not only a mermaid in the saltwater pool but i was a disney princess on land summoning these tropical beautiful birds it was phenomenal we had such a great day i loved it now i'm gonna pull you from sea into land or at least some distorted version of it we are in santa fe new mexico at a place called meow wolf aka the house of eternal return so Meow Wolf is an arts and entertainment group based in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Meow Wolf was established in 2008 as an art collective. So this group of aspiring artists had this fantastic idea to create a storyline based around an art exhibit. However, they did not have the funds to produce such a, a big project. So they actually reached out and were able to get the help from George R.R. R. Martin aka the author of Game of Thrones. So George R. R. Martin helped them rent out an abandoned bowling alley to start their project and lo and behold, Meow Wolf was born and it has, wow, it is, I've, I've grown to love it so much. It has found a place in my heart. Um, I saw videos of Meow Wolf on Facebook and I didn't quite believe it was real. <laughs> I kind of thought it was a fever dream, but I was able to explore it um, in 2019. And it is, yes, it is still a fever dream, but it is a little bit more real to me now. So I'll tell you a little bit about what goes on in Meow Wolf, but I by all means cannot tell you the storyline because A, that's part of the mystery. That's part of the fun is discovering what's going on 
And B, I couldn't even begin to tell you what all is going on <laughs> in this. Like, I feel like you'd find new things out each time you went. But this exhibit starts off in a seemingly normal home, but it, it's by far not. Um, I walked into the kitchen and there was an earthquake kind of happening. The whole establishment was shaking. The tables were shaking. The picture frames were wobbling. And I opened the refrigerator and was led into a hallway that exited out into a sci-fi travel agency. And if that isn't the weirdest thing you've ever heard someone say they experienced, I don't know what it is. <laughs> like, the, it, was, it was just insane. And uh, I also uh, crawled through a fireplace and exited out and was greeted by a bunch of colorful singing dinosaur bones. Um, oh, and let's not forget the totally normal thing that happens when you open a dryer and find a slide, a whole slide in a dryer. I slid down a dryer slide, people, and it was a blast. And you can tell from just that bottom right-hand picture that this is so much more than just an experience. It is a mystery. There are codes and puzzles all throughout this exhibit that you can decode. If you want, you don't have to. You can just walk through it and have Jess a good of time. Um, that's kind of what my um, aunts and uncles did when they went with me. They walked through it and they enjoyed themselves. But my husband, I, and my brother, we kind of stayed behind and we were trying to figure out what all was going on um, story-wise in this weird and wacky realm. I'll admit this particular slide diverges a little bit from my personal experiences and just kind of fangirls for a moment because I'm so excited that this group has expanded. They are so whimsical and I love seeing their influence start to take its shape in other states. So of course I talked about the House of Eternal Return. That's the one I've been to. That's the one that's been around the longest. Um, as you can see here, here's a bonus picture of me and my husband walking through a neon forest. Um, which I believe was in the basement of this house. You know, completely normal stuff. <laughs> but another thing that they have open currently is Kaleidoscope, which is a dark ride attraction in Denver, Colorado, in one of the uh, Denver theme parks, which I'd love to try out. I don't know what all happens in this dark ride, but I'm sure it is wacky, weird, and wonderful. You know, all that wonderful W... <laughs> alliteration nonsense that I just spewed off. And then the next installation that's going to happen is going to happen in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's called Area 15 and it's going to open in February. So like very soon, like when you're watching this video, they're probably getting ready to open their doors in the next couple days. And instead of starting off in a house, it's going to start off in a grocery store, a really, really weird grocery store that uh, it will be so cool to finally see. I, I've been following this um, development and I'm really excited to visit it when it opens and it's safe to explore. And then they're also, um, Meow Wolf is going to expand into Denver, Colorado a little bit more with uh, a museum that we haven't really gotten any details about, but it's predicted to open in 2021. I'm not sure if that's still the case, maybe later into 2021, but whatever it is, I will be so excited to travel there and experience that whimsical, wonderful, just wacky world once again. Same flavor here, just different realm. We are going into Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and exploring Factory Obscura. So according to the website, in a world of drag and drop, we've handcrafted our own 20th century take on the classic audio autobiography. Our mixtape is 6,000 square feet of handcrafted immersive art experience created just for you. Factory Obscura is also an art collective and just a very immersive narrative experience where you can walk through the journey that Basically, music takes you through, so not just relying on sound, but relying on how music impacts you emotionally. Like, each room is supposed to represent um, a different way that music really touches our soul. Um, 
Dr. Obscura's mission here is to support an array of artists, thinkers, creators, inventors, um, to inspire creativity, of course, in all its forms, bring people together, and awaken the inner child in all of us, which is clear. They have different interactive segments all throughout this exhibit. Um, they, of course, just like Meow Wolf, have places that have codes and puzzles that you can decode if you like, or you don't have to, but it's just part of the extra charm here. You can see I'm experiencing one of the swings that they have in a very front room um, that was very relaxing. Uh, I'm swinging in the clouds. And they have uh, my husband and I on this right side picture. There was a game that we were really excited because we had just beaten it <laughs> and it was kind of hard it was a laser light game and they actually installed their own arcade game um in this downstairs area which i wish i would have taken a picture of because it's really cool like that they were able to come up with that but my favorite part of this exhibit is how it connects directly to meow wolf i felt very much like a fangirl when i figured that out as if you know your favorite show is crossing over with another favorite show of yours and yours so ready to just eat it up you <laughs> you love the content um but there's a room in factory obscura that you can go into that directly connects it's a, a portal so to speak um to meow wolf so there's a mirror in meow wolf in the meow wolf household that directly connects right on back to oklahoma city so people in new mexico can directly contact people in oklahoma as they both experience a, a beautiful interactive art exhibit i love it i love it when art comes together it's so great i love the collaboration much like it did for Bentonville, I'm going to talk about the things that I love to do in Oklahoma City. So first off, I already talked about Factory Obscura, but I just wanted to point out, once again, I have somehow found myself under a book arch. <laughs> that is two in one presentation. <laughs> uh, I guess I gravitate toward them. It must be the inner librarian in me. Just got to find those book ar arches and pose in them, I suppose. Um, the second place I love to go to is City Bites. Um, it's just like a, a little sandwich shop, not a big deal, except for the fact that my brother and I get a huge kick out of the bathrooms there. When you go into the bathroom, there's a two-way mirror. So when you're in the bathroom, you can see out into the restaurant, but the restaurant can't see you. And I don't know, call it childish humor, but we thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> now, Pinkitzel, my third favorite thing to do. Okay, maybe not third. I don't think there's a particular order I'm putting these in, but it's just so, it's frou-frou. It is as frou-frou as you're going to get. It's like the equivalent of a poodle that's dressed in a big pink feather boa and is wearing a glittery unicorn crown. That is how I explain <laughs> pink itzel. But it has such great candy. It's got cupcakes. It's got truffles. It's got cotton candy it's mm, it's so good and it'll you know cure any sweet tooth the next thing i love to do is ride down the bricktown canal it definitely gives me vibes like the river walk does in uh, san antonio texas but this one's a little smaller still explores the history around Oklahoma City and it gives you kind of like a sense of city pride. You can tell how much Oklahoma City appreciates the whimsy that has been brought to their town, all the artwork and all the businesses. Um, they, they're they just very proud of that and you can really get a sense of that through the tour guides um, that are taking you around the Bricktown area. I also love river rafting at River Sport OKC. So I actually, this is a, <laughs> this is a fun fact. The first time I went to River Sport, I actually won a competition on Facebook. Um, or not competition. I guess I didn't fight for it or anything. I won a little contest. Like I entered in for a chance to win two tickets to River Sport OKC and I was magically drawn and man, I didn't even realize how much of a workout this would be at the end of the day but i mean they take you river rafting they take you on those huge like eight story like jungle gym courses that are kind of scary but also pretty cool 
and there's kayaking, paddleboarding, you name it. It's a great summer activity and I can't wait to go back. My tour guide was great. I did fall off. <laughs> I did fall off and that's because I had actually never been river rafting. This was my first experience and the course, um, as my guide said, was actually it's actually used for Olympic training. So it made me feel a little bit better about falling off um, and it should like make anyone that's wanting to go there feel better too because I mean they're not going to just <laughs> let you go. They'll, they'll save you. So you know, great place to river raft. Next up, um, I love admiring the art at OKC Contemporary. More art here that I'm talking about, but my last time I went to Oklahoma City, they had this light up sidewalk. So when it became dark, you would walk across the sidewalk right outside the OKC Contemporary, and with every step you took, it lit up. It would light up reds and purples and greens and it would just blind you and oh it was beautiful i just walked in circles for a while <laughs> to experience it it was awesome i also love indulging at capitals ice cream i would um, consider this to be the equivalent of uh, a hertz donut in ice cream form because these ice creams are i mean they're wacky they're wonderful and they're delicious and Yes. <laughs> if I hadn't already had enough candy and sweets at Pinkitzel, I guess Capitals really did it in for me. <laughs> now, I haven't mentioned a bookstore yet. I did mention this book, Arch, but I haven't mentioned a bookstore here. And so I've got to mention Full Circle Books, which is so quaint and cute. And when I visited last time, um, the workers had all come up front and they were getting ready to have a fireplace lighting ceremony and they were giving out ciders and cookies and snickerdoodles and I thought that was so quaint and cute and did I mention how much I love local bookstores? I love local bookstores and there was a really nice cafe in this one too which just is added fun and helps the you know coffee addict in me <laughs> function so also, um, I love strolling around the Myriad Botanical Gardens. This was kind of an accident the last time I went with my family um, because we weren't really expecting to stop here, but lo and behold, when we were walking around the Oklahoma City area, we just happened to stumble upon these gardens. We decided that we would, you know, test them out. And oh my goodness, I feel like it's a must do now whenever I go because it was tropical, it was warm, there were so many unique plants and greeneries around the area. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about just um, what was in the gardens themselves, about the different th plants they're keeping alive, the different climates that they need to be kept um, under. And just, wow, it was, it was beautiful. Very, very nice. 10 out of 10. And then last but not least, um, playing at Brickopolis Entertainment. Of course, I didn't do this on my last trip to Oklahoma City. It was a little ways back and I'm sure it's like improved tenfold since I've been last, but I know that when I was there, they had laser tag and mini golf and arcade games and just really like a, a fun area to just let loose be a kid again, once again, and have a good time and a good day. So Oklahoma City, yes, I love traveling there. I feel like it is such a whimsical place. I'm moving you toward the West Coast again, toward Destination 6, Pleasant Grove, Utah. Now, if you've been in the library the past few days, past week, and you saw an advertisement for my presentation, you're probably familiar with the right picture where you saw a rainbow fairy, a human in a ball cap, a robot, and an established Victorian gentleman. And you probably wondered, what on earth <laughs> is going on? Is this a convention? Are we at Comic-Con? Not quite, but not so far off all the same. This is actually a place called Evermore. So Evermore is a world of play for all ages, immersed in a fantasy European hamlet of imagination. Choose to join the knights, blackheart hunters, or rangers of the Red Fletch on 
guild quest. Engage with baby dragons, create fanciful music with dwarves and fairies, or just sit back and enjoy savory food and treats as the world unfolds around you. So this is a great experience that my family and I back in 2019 walked into. I had heard just a little bit about it online and I decided to see what the buzz was about. It's basically walking into a very ritzy, um, beautifully designed Renaissance festival. Like they've brought that concept like times 10. You can tell that they have worked so hard. They have Imagineers making the this realm look real. And it's it's beautiful, honestly. The architecture, um, the characters, it's so unique because once you go in, you've automatically been embraced by this world, by these characters, and any of the hired actors around the area are all wearing these necklaces, these little crystal necklaces, which means you can go up to them and ask them for quests. Yeah, it's like you're in a video game. They they send you on fetch quest and they're all improvisers and they do such a good job. They know this realm, they know this story, and by the end of the night, so will you. Depending on the season, Evermore has different festivals that happen. I've listed them all um, here along the side, but the one that I attended is that second one down, which is Mythos, the Dragon Festival, which was absolutely incredible. And of course, since I was there at the Dragon Festival, the mission that I chose to go on was to become a dragon trainer which was a lot of hard work. You can tell I'm wielding that bow and arrow that apparently I need to know the skill for in order to become a, a dragon trainer. I don't remember why exactly. I guess, you know, speed, agility. It took me a little bit. I'm not the most skilled bow woman, but <laughs> you know, they gave me a little grace. This world is I know I've already said it's fantastic, but how many times can I say that? It's fantastic. And how immersive it becomes is incredible too. By the end of the night, you know these characters' names, they know yours, and it's like you've befriended this whole group of new people just in a few hours. So when I walked in to the Evermore gates, um, it, at first it was raining and I was kind of worried that the experience was going to be dampened, no pun intended, but they shuffled us in to a little tavern area where they sang sea shanties to us until the rain passed. And that was really cool. <laughs> like, I love me a good sea shanty, like I was into it. And then walking around the area, um, I, it was, it was so cool to see all the different architecture and architectural designs going on. There was even like a little um, morgue kind of area that was very creepy and I did not want to go in because I knew that there was a creature that was hiding kind of in the crypts and I did not want to go in and be jump scared because I am not a brave soul. <laughs> I am just a little fairy. You can see I'm, I'm a fairy princess in the, these pictures. But um I did get my fetch quest to, you know, become a dragon trainer, and and through those, I was able to talk to, like you saw in the last picture, I, I joined forces with a robot, and I collected gold from um, kind of a consman. He, he tried to uh, swindle me out of some of my gold that I had collected, but I was able to um, barter with him a little bit, and... Um, you know, we split some gold 50-50 that we had both collected through um, information that we had shared to another source. And um, I even sent letters to other characters in the park. Like there's a mailman and he'll come up to you and be like, would you like to send a letter to get information? And you can write a letter and literally the mailman will go deliver it and he'll come back and find you. And you'll receive a letter by the character that you had just written. Like, it's honestly, it, it is, you are part of this world. And I love how immersive that is. And by the end of the night, I am proud to say that I did become a dragon trainer. 
I got to meet um, a baby dragon. Uh, I believe it was an ice dragon, a hatchling, and the puppetry, I must say, was super realistic. I, I did feel so accomplished that I got to actually pet and bond with this ice baby dragon um, by the end of the night. I felt like it was well worth my quest. And I didn't want to leave. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. I wanted to try more food. I only got to try the fairy popcorn while I was there, which is like drizzled with um, vanilla. And it has these um, colorful sprinkles on top that um, was delish. And I also got to make friends in this little, you can tell this little hobbit house in the bottom right hand corner um, is somewhere that I frequented a lot because there were just some fun, wacky characters in here that actually wrote a song about me. Like when I say these improvisers are really good at what they do, these improvisers know this realm. They are so like engulfed in this story and they produce different stories for everyone. Everyone's going to have a different experience while they're there. And that made my personal experience so unique and so special. Surprise! Bonus slide! I want to talk a little bit about the unique experiences that I explore just right in my own backyard. So I'm not going to talk about all of these in great detail because I figured that what this list can really be used for is for your own adventures. I know that in today's world it gets a little hard to really get up and travel and I don't want you to have listen to this and feel like it's still going to be a long time before I can travel and do these things. So I thought maybe just a little list of things around our area would make you feel like you could go on a day trip maybe sometime or just realize that not just our country has whimsical um, places to explore, but so does our state. Um, so does our hometown. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and just, you know, write down some of these that you might want to look into later on down the line if you're wanting to take like a day trip or uh, a weekend getaway with the fam. Some of these might be worth looking into. I know that the newest attractions in Branson are like the Wonderworks, Beyond the Lens, Aquarium at the Boardwalk. Those would all be really fun and I've heard that they are definitely whimsical, especially like at the aquarium at the boardwalk, the newest activity that you can do in Branson, there is a jellyfish infinity room that sounds incredible. And in Springfield, Missouri, our newest thing, we've got a new cool ice cream shop called Sweet Emotion that's downtown. And there is pitch black ice cream. Yeah, doesn't that sound very whimsical? <laughs> And plus, we've got other locations that you can explore in the surrounding area too, like Brookline, Osceola, Bolivar, Carterville, Mansfield, Joplin. They all have such fun places that you can travel to to just have your own whimsical adventure nearby. So I thought, you know, I would just drop this in for you guys to explore on your own. Okay, now we're really at the end. Thank you so much for listening, for watching. Um, I would love to answer any questions if you've got any, but just know I'm not a travel guide. I am just a travel enthusiast. So I love that you guys joined me today on our whimsical journey, and I hope that you have a great day, and I hope to see you in the library soon.